Most growers make harvest calls with a mix of calendar timing, gut feeling, and a quick glance at the surface. The problem is that the signals that matter most are microscopic, highly variable across the canopy, and easy to misread when lighting, angle, and magnification aren't consistent. That's why harvest timing becomes a gamble. You can be close and still miss your target window by days, and the difference shows up as inconsistent aroma, inconsistent effects, and inconsistent overall quality. This is where advanced image analysis changes everything. Instead of relying on impressions, microscopic imaging turns maturity into measurable data. When you collect repeatable, high-resolution images of gland heads over time, then quantify what you see with software. You stop arguing about whether a plant looks ready. You start tracking maturity distribution like a quality control problem. Consistent sampling, consistent measurement, and clear trends that can be compared across days, plants, and cycles. The cost of imprecise harvesting is larger than most people admit. Harvest too early and development is incomplete, profiles can be flatter, resin chemistry is still shifting, and the finished product often lacks depth. Harvest too late and you risk degradation of delicate compounds, dulling of aromatics, and a heavier overripe finish that may not match the intended profile. Even when the difference is subtle, the compounding effect across a full run is real. Variability increases, predictability drops, and the final product becomes harder to reproduce. The microscopic truth is that glandular trichomes are among the most reliable visual indicators of maturity in resinous aromatic plants. These structures develop over time, and their appearance shifts in ways that correlate with underlying changes in chemistry and physical composition. Under sufficient magnification, gland heads typically progress through recognizable visual states often described as clear, cloudy, and amber. Those categories are not just colors. They reflect changes in translucence, internal structure, and optical scattering that can be consistently observed when imaging conditions are controlled. The biggest mistake with traditional inspection is that humans are poor instruments. Eyes and brains adapt to lighting, overweight dramatic examples, and ignore sampling bias. It's easy to accidentally inspect the ripest top site, see a handful of amber heads, and mentally round that up to ready, even if the rest of the plant is behind. Image analysis fixes that by forcing two things, standardized capture and standardized counting. A precision workflow starts with imaging hardware that can reliably resolve trichome heads. The goal is not zoom, it's optical clarity. A practical setup can be a smartphone paired with a true macro lens or a clip-on microscope module, or a dedicated USB microscope, or a camera with a macro lens. What matters is stable magnification, stable distance, and stable lighting. If the camera hunts focus, if the distance changes every time, or if the light source is different day to day, classification accuracy collapses because glare and exposure shifts change the apparent look of the glands. Stability is the first upgrade, a simple tripod, clamp, or fixed mount that locks the lens to sample distance, eliminates motion blur and focus drift. Depth of field at high magnification is extremely shallow, so even tiny movement can turn sharp gland heads into smudges that the software misclassifies. Consistency in angle also matters, because specular highlights can make heads look clearer than they are, while shadows can make them appear darker or more amber than reality. Lighting is the second upgrade and it's where most bad graphs are born. Bright point source lighting causes glare, mixed lighting shifts color temperature, auto flash causes hot spots, a consistent white light source at a consistent angle, ideally diffused produces images with predictable contrast. Diffusion can be as simple as a soft LED with a diffuser or a ring light with a matte cover. The goal is to reduce glare on the curved surfaces of the gland heads. Even better results come from cross-polarization using a polarizing filter on the light and a matching polarizer on the lens to reduce reflections. 
because reflections are one of the main reasons cloudy gets misread as clear. Once imaging is stable, the next step is building a sampling plan. Precision doesn't come from one perfect photo. It comes from representative sampling. A simple, repeatable plan uses consistent locations and consistent counts, multiple sites on the plant, across multiple heights, including at least one interior and one exterior zone. Sampling should be consistent day to day, so trends reflect biology, not changes in where the camera happened to land. A strong practice is to collect a fixed number of images per plant and aim for a minimum number of measurable trichome heads per image, so the data set is large enough to reduce randomness. The more uneven the canopy, the more important it is to sample broadly and avoid hero buds that bias results. With images captured, the analysis pipeline has four stages, pre-processing, segmentation, detection, and classification. Pre-processing standardizes images so the algorithm sees consistent inputs. That usually means correcting exposure, normalizing white balance, reducing noise, and sharpening edges carefully without creating halos. If images vary widely in brightness or color temperature, classification will drift because the same trichome head can land in different color bins depending on lighting. Segmentation isolates the objects of interest from the background. In trichome analysis, the goal is to isolate gland heads, not sugar leaf. Texture, pistols, or background sparkle. A strong segmentation method uses a combination of brightness thresholding, edge detection, and shape constraints. Shape constraints matter because trichome heads have a roughly rounded geometry, while background highlights often have irregular edges. Good segmentation reduces false positives before counting even begins. Detection is the counting step, identifying each head as a separate object, even when they cluster. This is where image resolution and focus matter most. Overlapping heads can be split using watershed style methods or contour splitting, so the software doesn't count a cluster as one object. A practical output here is not only the total count, but also the count per unit area of the image, which helps validate that you're sampling similarly across days. Classification is where the system assigns categories. A straightforward classifier uses color and luminance features, how bright the head is, how much it scatters light, and what hue range it falls into, combined with texture cues that distinguish translucence from opacity, more advanced systems use machine learning models trained on labeled examples. Threshold-based classifiers are transparent and easy to tune, but sensitive to lighting changes. ML-based classifiers can be more robust if trained well, but require careful validation so the model doesn't learn glare patterns instead of true gland states. A highly effective practice is to include a calibration step that anchors color interpretation. That can be as simple as capturing a reference image under the same lighting each session, or locking white balance and exposure manually, so the camera doesn't autocorrect differently every day. Manual settings reduce day-to-day -day variation and make trend data meaningful. Another effective practice is to reject low-quality frames automatically. If an image fails a sharpness test or has excessive glare, it gets excluded so it doesn't poison the data set. The value of this approach becomes obvious when results are tracked over time. A single day's distribution can still be noisy. A three to five day trend tells a story. When the proportion of categories shifts steadily across repeated sampling, you're seeing maturation progression rather than random variation. This also exposes a truth that surprises many growers. Maturation is often uneven. Tops can shift earlier than lowers, exterior earlier than interior, and different sites can present different distributions on the same day. Quantifying this helps decisions become consistent because the data set makes unevenness visible. A precision system also benefits from basic statistics. If the software counts hundreds or thousands of heads across multiple images, you can compute variability and confidence in the distribution. 
A tight distribution with low variance suggests the plant is finishing uniformly. High variance suggests uneven ripening and indicates that a single check photo is not representative. Even without advanced math, reporting the number of heads analyzed and the number of images used dramatically increases reliability because it forces sample size discipline. Once measurement is repeatable, the practical benefits are immediate. Harvest outcomes become more consistent and consistency is the foundation of quality. The method reduces early harvest regret and late harvest degradation risk. And it also creates a record you can use to improve future cycles. When you can compare maturity curves across runs, you can identify which cultivars finish predictably, which ones ripen unevenly, and how environmental patterns correlate with the pace of maturation. The next frontier is predictive modeling. If image analysis produces a maturity distribution each day, those distributions can be used to forecast where the plant will be in a given time window. Combined with environmental logs, a model can learn how quickly maturity shifts under different conditions and make increasingly accurate predictions over multiple cycles. That is the real upgrade, moving from inspection to prediction where harvest timing becomes a planned outcome rather than an anxious guess. In the end, advanced image analysis is less about fancy tools and more about disciplined measurement. Consistent imaging, representative sampling, reliable classification, and trend tracking turn microscopic changes into actionable data. Uh, once maturity becomes measurable, quality becomes reproducible. And reproducibility is what separates guesswork from precision. Thank you all for watching. Leave a comment of topics you'd like for me to cover below. Subscribe if you enjoy this style of content. And as always, I'll catch you on the next one. Peace.